mad week for Forest. It is slightly calmer as we enter an international break, although it's never a dull day uh, for Nottingham Forest. Reasons we won't go into in other bits and pieces uh, that me and Dave have just been talking about before we came and recorded and started this. Uh, but we are live on Facebook, Nottingham Forest News and YouTube Garibaldi Red for the next half an hour or so to answer your Forest related questions. We've already got some sent into us uh, on the magic of Twitter or X as it's now known. Uh, but if you're watching on Facebook and YouTube throughout today's uh, podcast, you can get your comments in and me and Dave will do our best to answer them they can be anything forest related or if you want to know i don't know any information about dave or what kind of tea he likes or his favorite food uh, <laughs> then you're more than welcome uh, to add those comments in um afternoon dave sun shining out the bedroom window for me and um happy friday uh, how are you yeah. feeling after the points deduction and um yeah how's life mate good to see you yeah, it's okay, mate. A bit achy from some time in the gym this week, but I put some work in and, you know, you pay the price. Got a game of footy at R4 this afternoon, which I'm looking forward to. Sun's out. And with regards to the points deduction, knowing is better than not knowing. At least we know now. We know where we are. And um, we can sort of move forward from it and hopefully use it as a motivational tool to uh, get as many of the 27 that are still left on offer to us, you know, in the coffers. Yes, that brings us nicely on to our first question, actually, um, which has set us up. Uh, Jamie has asked, what are your thoughts on the points deduction both? Will we go down and do you think we should appeal? Um, obviously, Forest have seven days to appeal. That was seven days from Monday. So basically, they've got this weekend to decide. Uh, judging from the club statement uh, that, um, that Forrest put out, I suspect they will appeal. Lots of people think they will. Um, but but in terms of in terms of that, Dave, for me, kind of opens up a can of worms. It could even get us more points deducted. We have broken the rules. Four points isn't that bad. I mean, for you, would you do you think Forrest should appeal, or is this a sense of move on, take it on the chin, a little bit like the referee decisions, and we almost use it as that kind of siege mentality? Um, should they appeal? I don't know, Max. Really, I don't have a. Have you either either way of that? Um, with regards to the four, I was always resigned, mate, to six. Um, but I'm not happy that it's four instead of six. I'd, I'd rather it be none. You know, I don't, I don't. You know, the people saying, "Oh, great, it's four instead of six. No, I'd rather it be none. Um, so you know, we know what it is now. Forest were, from what I can gather, were extremely transparent with everything, extremely cooperative hid nothing from the investigators, which um, seems to be like the only mitigation to get it from six to four. I mean, uh, to start with eight as your, as your target when it's nine for insolvency seemed a little bit draconian to me. Um, but, uh, you know, it is it is what it is now, uh, Max. Re regarding the statement that came out, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was absolutely superb. And, uh, and what Nottingham Forest did, they basically spoke for themselves and 85 other clubs. You know, yeah. basically, basically what Forest was saying is, you six are over there wanting to remain untouchable. Every time one of us, you know, be it Nottingham Forest or Everton or Leicester City or whoever else, wants to spend money to try and compete with you, we, we get pulled back for it. And it was it was almost like Forrest saying what a lot of football fans think, that the elite is protecting itself and wants to stay elite and doesn't want anybody else to break into that, that upper echelon. I mean, if it's speaking, to, I mean, it literally is speaking for everybody from us, you know, Villa, Brighton, Fulham, Luton, Sheffield United, all the way down to Forest Green Rovers and Sutton United. Colchester and, and teams like that near the bottom of, of League Two. And it's saying that six over there just want to protect themselves. You know, they want a six-team league, effectively. And I thought mm. the statement was absolutely brilliant. It was so good, Max, that statement, that each line was cut, <laughs> cut out and, and transmitted verbatim on the ticker tape on Sky Sports Rolling News on Monday. I thought it was a brilliant statement. Whoever worded it deserves a hell of a lot of credit. And it, and it was a... It, yeah, I remember uh, 
somebody saying it was a fiery, quite angry statement. I thought, well, I better have a look at that. And I was then thinking, when I came to read it, I was thinking, oh, please don't have said the wrong thing. Don't, don't make, you know, don't kick the hornet's nest and make it worse. And then I read it and I just thought it was fantastic. It was mm. almost a call to arms. It was, it was almost like a slight declaration of war on the big six. And it was great. And, it, and, yeah. and you know, pe people at Ipswich Town, Hull City, West Bromwich Albion, Leeds, Southampton, you name it. They'll all be looking at that and thinking, you know, if we've got the money, and let's remember, however sort of zany the transfer business became last year, it was Mr. Marion. I always got the impression, well, it's Mr. Marion Ackes' money. It's up to him what he does with it. And, you know, he stood on the balcony of the council house in Market Square, you know, that day after we'd beaten Huddersfield at Wembley. And he sort of said to Steve, as it was at the time, I'm going to give you what you want to be able to compete in this league. And he put his money where his mouth was. You know, he might it might have been a bit, you know, do all in the, the way he did it, Max. But he, you know, Mr. Marinakis stated a name and then he followed it up with money. And you know, I just think, yeah, okay, okay, the rules are the rules, and you have to you have to abide within them. And I, you know, you know, but at the same time, it's they keep they keep changing them, they keep moving. I mean, it, and there's a lot of football people, a lot of people who love football who are kind of finding their love of it compromised by you know not looking at a table and some standards that are, are kind of authentic what you know well Everton might have a few taken off for it Forest might have some more taken off you know I read this week that if Forest don't sell a, a key player or a couple of key players they're likely for another one you know so it's just it's almost like the distance between them six and the rest of us it's been stretched even further mate it seems to me so well yeah the points deduction is what it is it's done now we have to we have to react to it like Everton reacted at the time. I think, you know, when Everton had 10 taken off, they went on a run, they got them all back pretty quickly. So I, I hope that Nuno and the lads will use it as a, you know, a motivational tool and go and get them back. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's all very sort of, what you know, we're talking about business and accounts and ledgers and, you know. Yeah, things that football should never probably cross yeah. paths with in a way. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree, um, which is quite funny because there's a few comments about that. Uh, Martin asks, should we contest the four points deduction? Surely we have nothing to lose after seeing Everton's reduced, obviously similar to what we've just been talking about. Um, mm. I mean, I think, in, in, in my opinion, Dave, when you look at that, the, the reason is, and, and Forrest have broken the rules, and, and look, none of us agree with the rules. You're spot on, Dave, about kind of the top six and there being that gulf of quality and the smaller mm. teams trying to compete with the top six, that's kind of the problem that that, that, that Forest have faced themselves under and, and and have been punished for that, basically. And, and mm. the rules should be changed. They're going to be changed in the summer. It's just mm. that, sadly, Forest and for us. Everton... Yeah, exactly. Too late for us. So I'm just mm. not sure whether kind of this going on and on is good news for Forest, which is mm. quite nice because Chris says, can't wait for the season to end. No matter what happens, this hasn't been about football in terms of this season. I can't remember my last conversation about football. It's been about referees and mm. FFP. And that is the problem at the yeah. moment, Dave. I feel yeah. like every, every podcast, every day, Every conversation in a pub with a Forest fan or any football fan in general, when you tell them you're a Forest fan, I was in an Uber on the way to somewhere in Manchester this morning and the Uber driver was talking to me, he was a Bolton fan and we were on about Forest and straight away the first thing he says is about the, about the points deduction and that's mm. all that's dominating the football club at the minute mm. and it would mm. be nice to almost focus on the pitch, Dave, and turn mm. turn turn that anger and frustration into results, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, mate, yeah. I. I felt that. I mean, you know, for me, they had a perfect they had a perfect chance to do that at Brighton after the anger from the Liverpool game, and unfortunately, they didn't do it. They were really, really poor at Brighton, you know. Um, and and as you say, mate, it's so all in that we have to talk about money and we have to talk about officials and all. That. I want to talk about the movement of a football around a beautiful piece of green grass, you know, with human beings at speed, with skill and technique and determination and you know, fighting qualities and all this kind of stuff. But now we end up, to, you know, we we talk about the periphery, you know, the peripheral stuff around football. We don't actually talk about the football, the game itself. And it's deeply, um, I, it makes me despair, really, Max. You know, I mean, I obviously have <laughs> been on this planet quite a bit longer than you, mate. So I, I can sort You're of up. think Hardly. back to, yeah, a long time, mate, you know what I mean? So I can think back to those days when, you know, it was 
it's all it seems all about the business now and it's like you know the meritocracy of the of what's going on on the field but the thing is it's you know i i yearn for some parity if you i've used the example i was on a pod last night i used the example of the nfl now the nfl and roger goodell and their commission over there they what they want is they want parity so at the end at the start of every season the second sunday in september 32 teams in the nfl set off thinking yeah we can reach super bowl right similarly with the nrl the, the, I, I love the australian rugby league it's a tougher league sports wise is there any anywhere in the world you know 18 teams set off at the start of that. They just set off the last couple of weeks thinking we can go to the grand final, you know, in, in Sydney or Melbourne, wherever it is. In it, in this country, I don't know, 17 out of the 20 teams set off thinking, just give me 17th and above and that'll do me. Whereas there's two or three who think, right, we can win it. And it's like, it's just boring. It's really, really boring. You have all these like previews of the season before and then why don't they just... They could cut them all. Why don't you say, oh, it'll be City, Liverpool, or Arsenal. Forget the rest. You know what I mean? It, yeah. And it and it's it's tiresome. It's like you know, a lot of Forest fans won't won't like me saying it, but I remember if you go back 2015, 2016, and Leicester City won the league as five thousand to one outsiders. I mean, I'm you know, being a Forest man, I'm not supposed to say anything nice about Leicester. But we were in the championship at the time, and and with the 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 more and more Leicester stayed at the top, and cocked to snook at the big guns, the better it became, you know. And uh, there's a feeling <laughs> Leicester have just been just been charged, and they're going to go through what we've gone through, you know. Mm. And it's almost like you almost feel like, well, they've been they've been punished now from the temerity to win the Premier League back in the day and break the monopoly. And a monopoly. Exactly, Dave. Now, do you know what Max? I don't know economically, and you know. Government departments that they have the is it the monopolies and whatever it merges commission monopolies are always seen to be not a good thing. We've got monopolies. We've got a monopoly in football. I mean, you look at the FA Cup semi-finals. I, I'm looking at the FA Cup semi-finals. Go on, Coventry City, win the FA Cup. But you know, you'll probably we'll probably do, you know we, all our finals these days are boring because it's always the same sort of teams that get through. You know what I mean? And football's just going through this loop where the same thing keeps happening. Max, you know. Yeah, it's uh, no, I agree. Some, mate. Mm. Leicester won the FA Cup, win the Premier League, become an established mm. Premier League side, albeit until last yeah. season, and yeah. they get punished for it. I completely agree, yeah. Dave. Um, yeah, and yeah. Phil, Phil does as well. Spot on, Dave. Um, Martin asks, how disappointed has how disappointing has Sangari been this season? He does the business most matches for the Ivory Coast, but it's not working for him in the Garibaldi. We should have kept Mangala. Do you agree with that, Dave? Um, I do feel like Sangari's got more to show, hasn't he? Uh, I, I, I just feel like for the money we've paid for him, given Brennan's sale as well, he's got a long way to go to kind of prove himself, hasn't he? He has. He's, it has been a disappointment, to be honest with you. You know, he's a big lad. He's got, he's, he, looks, he looks a beast when you see him, but he just doesn't quite... He isn't quite fulfilling all the... There was a lot of hype when we signed him, you know, from what he'd done at Eindhoven. You know, he played brilliantly for Eindhoven against Rangers, I think, in a in a European Cup, you know, Champions League qualifying game or something. We thought, wow, this guy's a player. And and I spoke to, to people from other clubs going, and they were all like, wow, you've got yourself a player there in Sangari. And for whatever reason, it hasn't quite happened. And uh, yeah, he's disappointing. Um, we, we've paid a lot of money, you know, but then again, you know, you pay a lot of money and it's no guarantee you're going to get yourself a great player. I mean, like Manchester United have spent untold millions on Anthony and, you know, he's not done very much really. Okay. He had a decent game last, last week and he had a decent game against us last year, but he hasn't really backed it up. So, you know, Ibra's, Ibra still needs to, you know, get and make an impact. I did feel at Luton on Saturday that, he had a slow start, but I thought he got better as the game went on. But you just want him to, you know, we haven't had anybody really bosses of midfield. Uh, you know, I mean, Mangala, Max, turned to Oral. I'd have kept Oral because I thought Oral was our best guy for keeping the ball in midfield. Yeah, me too. I I, I, I was disappointed when Oral left. I thought thought he's a, he's a, he's a good, solid, quiet player, Oral. He kind of went under the radar, you know, but I bet... 
I bet quite a lot of our lads were sad to see him go as well, you know, but again, that's, it is what it is. You, you know, no use crying over spilt milk now, but yeah, to answer the question, Ibrahim has been disappointing, um, but I think there's a player in there and Oral, I would not have let Oral go because he just, I just felt he was our best guy at keeping the ball. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, spot on. Um, I agree. It'd be kind of be interesting to see how Sangari plays out and, and if Forest find themselves in the championship next year, how mm, mm. a lot of, of the players we've got, which is interesting and leads me nicely onto the, the next question that we got on Twitter. We will kind of switch back from, from Twitter and from YouTube and Facebook, by the way. So, yeah. Yeah. so do keep your comments uh, coming towards um, Dave uh, and, and myself. Um, someone's asked here, Laith asks, Forest, will Forest stay up? I think kind of we've, we've kind of already touched on that quite a lot. Uh, but can the podcast see a championship 11 from our existing squad, including the players currently on loan at the club that would realistically stay and take us back up again to the Premier League? Now, that's a really good, it's a, it's a great yeah, it's question. A cracking question. Yeah. Brilliant a question. Cracking question. Um, I, I, I think so, Dave. I think the likes of Gib, I think the likes of Morgan, Murillo, Sangare, if the worst happens, possibly Anthony would leave. But apart from that, I'm kind of, I, I think, I think the, the situation would be similar to a Leeds style situation last season when they got relegated yeah, and yeah. managed to, yeah, yeah. to to keep quite quite a lot of Premier mm. League players, you'd say, mm. Bamford, yeah, Nonto, yeah. Harrison, yeah. etc. Ruta, yeah. Until he went, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but for Forrest, it it would be so difficult, wouldn't it, if the club got relegated of, of where you'd go next and where your almost big names, if you like, big players like Morgan and, and, and Sangari would end up, Dave? Yeah, I. it's a cracking question. And actually, it, 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 who asked the question, by the way? What's the name Lath, of the person? Laith. Laith. Well, I've been thinking what Laith's been thinking. I've, will we go down? I don't know. I, I was asked on Monday and I said yes, but then I was really, really disappointed about the points deduction. I was in a I was in the Slav despond Max, so I probably was it wasn't the right time to ask me. Do I think we'll go down? I honestly don't know. Burnley don't know. Everton don't know. Luton don't know. Brentford don't know. Right? You know, we're all in that don't know. Sheffield United. Maybe they don't know yet. But if we were to go down, I think there's there's a makings of a, a of a good solid championship side. I, I don't think Selsey's gonna go. Uh Harry Toff. Andy Omabama Daly, you know, Moose, um, you know, Dominguez, Yatesy. Yatesy's not going anywhere because <laughs> if Yatesy went away from Nottingham Forest, he'd probably just wither because he is Nottingham Forest, you know. <laughs> I mean, the ones, the ones, you know, Josh Bowler's playing well for Cardiff. He could come back. You know, there are other guys knocking about. I, I think Forest would have, you know, if Forest were to go down, I, I think Morgan would be definitely going. Morgan would be cherry picked for sure. I think Tywo might be cherry picked. Um, Divox obviously going to go back to AC Milan, and then I think he's he's been sold on from there. Woody, yeah, I don't I don't think Woody will go anywhere. I think Woody will stay with us. Um, Nico is an interesting one because mm, you know Nico is. scored for Nico scored for Wales last night, and I think Nico has been lovely. He's played really really well these last few weeks, Nico. You know, he's gone from those good cameos that he put in at the start of the season. Now Nico's in the side, playing really, really well. You know, Nick, somebody, a Premier League side might come and think, well, we'll have Nico Williams off you. You know, he's an international player. Play, let's say he had a cracking game last night. You know, Ola is knocking about. I don't see Ola going anywhere. You know, I, it, it's, I think, I think, I think there is a makings of a, a side that if it went down, it would definitely challenge to come straight back up for sure. Max, yeah. You know, and, it, and it's, it, yeah. But as I say, the ones to go, Morgan, I think Morgan would definitely go. I mean, Morgan might have to end up being sold anyway if, if to avoid another points deduction, mm. which is what I've read this week. Tywo, I think. The only trouble with Tywo is Paul like, keeps picking injuries up. It's like, you know, he's, he's he spends more time than the lad does in the treatment room. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's winding him up as much as it's winding everybody else up. I think he's a, a genuinely good guy. Um, you know, Dominguez would stay, I think. Um yeah, I mean, we we won't be we won't be having to bring in like five or six loans again, like like we did, you know, the last time before we came up, you know. So uh, yeah, I I'd, I'd be I'd be relatively confident, Max. If we went down, we would at least challenge to come back up. I'm not I'm not going to go so gung ho say we'll go down and we come straight back up. 
it, it doesn't work like that. I mean, Leicester looked like they were going to go down and then come straight back up, and all of a sudden they've hit a, they've hit a flat spot. Leicester have whether yeah. it's related, whether it's re- whether Leicester's flat spot, Max, is related to PSR stuff. Only people within the club will know that. But yeah, I'm I'm relatively confident as a making sort of good championship side there, mate. Definitely, if we were to go down, but we might still be a Premier League team, but we just don't know, mate. <laughs> that's so that's so uh, Matthew says a good point if we go down I have a few players we could look for Philip Zinkenagel Keenan Davis Steve Cook Jack Colback like <laughs> great championship yeah. side I tell you we what we all know loves you Dave Philip Zinkenagel yeah. was, a big, was, a, was a big fan of match there with Max and a big fan yeah, of Dave was, and I tell you what mate what get his film get Zinks's film star looks back in here I mean we're, we're losing we're losing the most beautiful human being that's ever lived Felipe because the big man's going, and you know, the, the our lovely ladies in Nottingham Forest say that they need some eye candy. Let's get Zinx back in. And I, I like I know Zinx could be infuriating, good one day, not so good the other, but good player, got a bit about him, you know. But now I don't see any of those coming back, uh, Max, you know, um, at the moment. But the thing is with Nottingham Forest, the, the you know, the story takes twists and turns and it goes down rabbit holes and all sorts, you know. And, just never know. With it. I mean, the one thing, the one thing, was every every tricky tree is guaranteed, Max. It's never dull, is it? You know what I mean? It isn't. It isn't. You're right. It's never going to be a dull moment in the forest uh, history. Might be uh, nice if I'll... it were. You know what, Max? It might be nice if it were dull, and we were just like Crystal Palace in the middle of the table, and nobody noticed us. But we're forest, yeah. aren't we? You know what I mean? It's football, isn't it? It is football as mm. well. Um, you know, I I Mad. used to love I, I used to love Zink's uh, kind of cameo at the end where he kind of turned to the forest. Uh, forest used to do a, a clip of him on social media, <laughs> and he'd yeah. go "Vamos" when we'd won, and it was yeah. brilliant. And I thought those you, were the good days. Do you know what I remember having Max? Was, do you remember the we beat Derby at home two one, and and um, Brennan scored the winner. Zink had pulled the ball back. And Brennan scored the winner, <laughs> and at the end of the game, I think at Tom, uh, oh. Uh, Ravel Morrison got sent off, and there was a big kerfuffle involving the Forest lads and the Derby lads, right? And what I remember is Zinkenagel started it, but having started it, Zinkenagel sort of like thought, oh, I've had enough of this. And he went off on his own to give his shirt to a little lad who came out the training tent, and, and he was acting all innocent. He was, he was brilliant. He gave the little lad his shirt, Zinks did, and he was acting as if, oh, I'm not, what's going on over there is nothing to do with me. And I was like, I remember thinking, hey, mate, you little Danish tinker, you've just started that, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I remember Brees getting involved in all sorts, you know, but Bless. good day that was. Any day being mm. Derby's a good day, isn't it, mate? It is, it is. Um, yes, yeah, you're right, Dave. I was, gonna, I was about to say it might be next season, but that isn't what we want. That, that isn't what <laughs> no, we it want. We'll no, it isn't what we want, mate. No. Um, Dan asks on Facebook, if we go down, do we sack the manager? Of course, at Nuno. That's a very interesting one. Again, it would be parallel Mm. to something like Leicester and Leeds going down last season. Mm. I cannot see, Dave, with the way that Forest are run. This isn't my opinion, but the way that that, that, that Forest are run and the Maranakis ownership that Mm. that Nuno Espirito Santa would be given a chance in the championship and himself probably wouldn't want to be in the championship managing. I, I I just can't see it, David. I don't know about you, but I think if we got relegated, I think Nuno would leave. I agree. I think um, if we go down, there'll be some very very uh, rigorous navel gazing, and there'll be a, a. I think there'll be a complete reset. Uh, not so much with the playing staff, but I think in terms of the the coaching direction and all that, I think there'll be a complete reset. I think if we go down, I'd be very surprised if Nuno. We're still here next season, Max. That said, you know, his championship record with Wolves is, is a is a brilliant one. You know, what he did with Wolves was fantastic. But, you know, that was then and this is now. And I, uh, you almost feel that if Forest do go down, someone will have to carry the can. And in modern football, Max, it's always the coach that carries the can and yeah my view is if we do go down then I don't think Nuno will be our manager next season 
Uh, yeah, uh, I agree with that. Um, right, let's do some more questions that we had on Twitter. Uh, this one's quite interesting. Andy asks, are we going to back the manager, I'm guessing at the moment he means currently, and bring the atmosphere back to the city ground? It has been so flat recently. It has, hasn't it, Dave? And we've talked mm. about it on previous mm. podcasts. And results yeah. do stay good atmosphere. But we need... we. Now the points deduction stuff is is out of the way, albeit that, that, that Forest don't appeal. There's got to be that togetherness now off the pitch and the fans really do have to make... I mean, I think the atmosphere against Palace at the city ground is going to be... Yeah. It's going to be, it's well, going to be something special. It's going to be electric, isn't it? It is, mate. I think, yeah, the Palace game, you'd like to think it'll be as hostile as it possibly can be. You know, I mean, you'd like to think Palace are walking into an ambush. I... I to be fair, Glasner's a clever man. He'll know what, what's coming. We have to use it. it. You know, it's this sense of hurt and pain and injustice. You either wither it on the vine or you fight back. You know, the only thing is, that, as I go back to the Brighton game, I wanted to, I wanted that anger from the Liverpool game translated into performance at the Amex. It didn't happen. And it was really poor on Forrest's part that day. That was the worst, that was the worst away day I've had with, with, with Forrest Max. You know, there were, personal stuff going on and then Forrest were just you know all that time invested going there and whatever you and okay you know we have no divine right to a result you know I have no entitlement to like a win at Brighton but it'd be nice to have seen some kind of Forest presence there you know but it didn't happen it's got to happen against the, these next two games at home the, the Palace and the Fulham game we need to get something out of them and the fans need to be engaged um, I'm not sure that Nuno's the kind of guy that's going to go and engage the fans. I don't know. He's not that sort of fella. I mean, what I would say is I was at the Kenny on um, on um, Saturday and at the end of the game, there was some, um, what's the word, disgruntlement. He came over and there was some fans giving him a bit of a volley and then some of the players got a volley and all that kind of stuff. I mean, mm. You know, I've seen accusations that, like, at Kenilworth Road, they weren't trying. I, I think that's nonsense. If Forrest had have won 1-0 at Luton Town, would everybody have been trying? But because they gave away a late equaliser, they weren't trying. I, I, I saw Ryan Yates run his nuts off last week. Willie Bolly played really, really well. You know, I think Willie is a crucial guy for us going forward. You know, I thought Morgan Gibbs-White ran his nuts off. I, I didn't see anybody not trying last week. We were the better side. You know, our Achilles heel, unfortunately, just give these daft goals away, you know. But say, people people assume that if a, if a match is won, the players were trying. If a match is lost, they weren't trying. You can try your guts out on a bad day. And the, the harder that you try, the worse it gets. And I've seen some accusations of our lads this week, you know, people going on about what they're wearing and they're millionaires and what cars they drive and all this kind of stuff. Utter nonsense. I was in the Kenny. And Forrest had to go through a little bit of a period where Ross Barkley dominated the game. You know, he had three shots early on, but in the end, Forrest were the better side. Um, it was just galling that we didn't get the win. But I, you know, I the trouble is with Nuno as well. He's you know, managers these days seem to get 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 rated or whatever on, on substitutions. And the substitutions, I'm sure they were made for the for the you know, what he believed were the right reasons but hindsight proved them they were wrong. I mean, basically, most football fans don't ever want to defend a put-on. They just want to attack all the time. Well, that's that's an idealistic nonsense. You know, sometimes you have to put a defender on. People, I mean, if yeah. for it, if Nuno had put... I tell you what, if Nuno had put four attackers on last week or five attackers on and Forrest had still given the goal away, would people still think the substitutions were bad? I, don't, I mean, at, at Brighton, when it wasn't very good... At one point, he had he had he had four or five forwards on the field, if I remember rightly. So, you know, I don't know. It's just I don't. There isn't. There certainly isn't a great emotional bond between the people in the stands, Max, and our manager, like there was with the previous guy. But the previous guy was a completely different human being, mm -hmm. who, you know, for his own individual requirements, he needed that. And I and you know, Steve. When he came in, he looked at it from the round and, and thought, I need this city and this football club. They need to be brought back together. And, and it, yeah, it didn't work out in the end, but he de he definitely did, you know, bring yeah. on that. That's 
I have yet to hear, you know, <laughs> you hear just can't get enough. And then they've, they've, a couple of times <laughs> they've played just can't get enough in the city ground, Max. And then people have gone, Steve, oh, oh he's not our manager anymore, is he? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I still, I still think there's a great, there's a lot of fondness for Steve Cooper. But the yeah. thing about Steve Cooper is he's not the manager anymore. So to talk about Steve actually is just a waste of air, mate, really. But um, mm. I I just worry that there isn't that emotional connection um, mm. from the stands to the manager. But we need it against Crystal Palace. You know, in fact, we need it. We need it nine times from now on. You know. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree, Dave. Um, that that is the uh, the thing that that, that that many Forest fans have been calling, and kind of results mm. do drive the atmosphere as well, and, and just results do, haven't been great at the match. minute. Um, I, we'll kind of go with the last few questions. Um, this one came on Twitter. I think it's a great question. Susie asks Max and Dave, who was the Forest manager that you felt was the most hard done by? Um, I'll kick it off and I'll say, and this gives me a cheeky pr- a chance to plug plug the interview we did with him. I'll say Mark Warburton. I thought Warburton was hard done by at Forest. I think a little bit more time. I think he was at his peak in terms of terms of a managerial career. Um, I think he was a good guy. I think just genuinely we weren't. We were four points off the playoffs. We were on a bit of a bad run. And they sacked him, um, which gives me a chance to plug the podcast we did with him. Uh, so if you're at a loose end this weekend, uh, that, is, that isn't the reason why I've answered the question of Mark. I, I genuinely think that, that, that Forrest were hard. I think Forrest, Forrest um, sacked uh, kind of Warburton harshly. Uh, and he goes into that and, and we kind of have a chat, me and him. And it's a really good chat. So if you do want to listen, uh, it's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, where you always get your uh, Forest content. Uh, so do give that a watch or a listen over the weekend. It's um, it's a really nice uh, it's really nice listen and um and yeah because uh, there's no football you might enjoy it uh, dave what about you though who do you think was the manager that was unfairly sacked uh, throughout your time of supporting forest a lot longer than me let me just turn the phone off see this is my, this is the magic of live tv as dave Ashby <laughs> said as dave Ashby yeah. said last week what was it that's the dangers of life. Never work, with, never work yeah. with children, animals, or Dave Asprey. That was the estate agent, mate. Bless him. He's a cracking lad, but he's got to wait a minute because yeah. the manager for me, who was the most harshly dealt with, was Sean O'Driscoll. I yes. thought his oh, sacking. Yeah, yeah. I thought his sacking on Boxing Day after we'd beaten Leeds four two was just. Um, it was a nonsense, really. Yeah, Matthews. Yeah. Matthews. Reading my head, Matthew said, Sean O'Driscoll, mine, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Win, yeah. I, I, that's the one that, that 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 sticks with me. I remember, I mean, those days, Max, I didn't really, I was mad for it, but I was living in Bournemouth and I was, I was either playing or managing every weekend, so I could never get to matches. But I do remember being up home for Christmas and uh, I was with my brother on Boxing Day afternoon and uh. We, we were following the match. It was an early kickoff, I think. And Forest won four. Yeah, it two. was. Played, played really, really well. And Sean O'Driscoll, who I know for a fact, because I, um, I met, I met his, his daughter. Actually, his daughter was the girlfriend of a lad who played for me in Bournemouth, right? And his daughter was a lovely girl. And and the O'Driscoll family were a nice family. And, and Sean was always like this kind of, you know, quite thoughtful. You know, he was not an outgoing man, but a thoughtful, intelligent guy, you know. Yeah. And um, I thought his treatment by the worst owner our club's ever had was pretty scandalous, really, Max, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it was. And um, and I can remember that day. And, yeah. and we ended up having Alex McLeish after, which <laughs> was um, interesting. And then Billy, part two. We've, we've, we've had to... <laughs> Do you know want to just kind of sit down and there's a great... There's a great, there's a great video, and it was released a good few years ago. Copper ninety did a, did a brilliant yeah. trailer on Forest, and they got yeah. all the fans that they got on, and their special guests, and they had Matt Ford and Helena Doughty, and all these other Forest kind of fans, and everyone sat down, and they went through how many managers we've had since Brian Clough, and some went, is it sixteen, is it twelve, eleven, eight, and then one got it right, and they listed it, listed them all: Billy Davis, Alex McLeish, Sean O'Driscoll, Chris Hewton, Mark Warburton. And the list goes on and on. I, and I just think sometimes, you know, it, David, and, and, and that's why managers like Cooper will be remembered forever as a as a as a club legend because of what he did for the football club. Yeah. 
I, I was fine. I was found those those years from sort of, yeah, you know, I mean, Cluffy, brilliant, obviously the greatest. You know, he he would have the old the old boy, the immortal, the incomparable. He would have been eighty nine yesterday, and um, just the greatest of them all. We were lucky that we had the greatest manager football's ever seen, right? And, and I'll I'll stick me. There've been some greats: Shanks, Busby, Jock Steen, Alf Ramsey. Some great managers. Cluffy, the greatest of all of them. You know, his, his, his achievements tell you he's the greatest of all of them. Harry Bassett did a fantastic job. Frank did a great job. Steve did a great job. But, you know, times around that, I used to think the joke would all, you know, Nottingham Forest, longest serving manager, he's been there three quarters of an hour. He's had enough time to make a cup of tea and then get sacked. You know what I mean? And it and it's embarrassing. The turnover is embarrassing. You know, we, we all, all our success was in our period of greatest stability, Max, when from sort of 75, January the 6th, 75 to 90. Two, I think it was, or whatever, when when the great one left, you know what I mean? And, and it just shows that continuity and stability are so important. But at the time, unfortunately, we had an owner who, well, he'd never kicked a football, had he? If he showed him a football, he'd have probably tried to eat it, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was always deeply embarrassing. And like you say, Max, the conversation you've had this week, people have been keen to want to get onto the subject of points deductions back in those days. People were keen to say, uh, "Oh, who's your manager this week?" And you know, and they had every right to to mock, because it was a it was a standing joke. It was a standing, sitting, leaping, jumping joke, really. Yeah, it was. And uh, now, uh, Nuno Espirito Santo, the Forest manager, he has a tough job on his hands uh, as Forest in the relegation zone after the yeah. points deduction this week. But fingers crossed, uh, we've got an international break now this weekend. A rare, a rare weekend off of Forest. I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do myself. <laughs> Uh, I might go and watch. I might go and watch Stockport County. I think they're playing MK Dons tomorrow, and oh, that'll be a good game. There. So yeah, I might good go game there. that. Yeah, uh, quick Big train, quick that, train so. from Piccadilly. It, from Piccadilly, uh, so I might yeah. go and watch. Uh, go out, you know, the weekend off from football spent with watching football. That's the way to do it. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's a busman's so. holiday, isn't it? I'm, I'm <laughs> just. I'll go to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym in the morning, and the gym on Sunday, and then I'm going to go back to mum and dad's and pick up a few bits and bobs before we get the house cleared so that's i think that's what the estate agent is bringing up he's got somebody to clear the house for his right that, that's all moving i will yeah good um i will let you speak to the estate agent thank you for all your questions been really fun doing this uh, we'll do another yes. one in the next few weeks yeah. uh, we will see you on monday for our main episode as well despite obviously no forest this weekend yeah. uh, dave anything else for you left to say any words of advice no, wisdom no, wisdom. You're not going to get wisdom from me. Wizened, maybe, Max, but not wisdom. <laughs> um, you know, because I'm like 60 and I'm just as juvenile. Now I'm 60 oh, as I was when I was not, six mate. or we 16. Can I just say, actually, Max, yeah. that the, question, the questions that have come in have been really, really good. And it gives me confidence that our fan base is an intelligent community. So that's been good, mate. It's raised my spirits a bit. Good, good stuff. Um, right, we will see you Monday for our main episode. Uh, Sarah will be back with me and a few special guests and then we'll see you throughout next week as Forrest have a huge game at home to Palace after the points deduction. So Forrest hit with a four points deduction on Monday. Rishi Sunak visits the city ground today. I'll let, I'll let the listeners decide which one's worse. Bye-bye. <laughs>